The stage now set then for the world champion Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari, fastest this morning in free practice, fastest in the first qualifying session. The big crowd here, they've certainly heard of Michael Schumacher. They've come to see him do some uh, of what he does best, which is beating the opposition. Oh. Whoa, and he's made a bit of a mess of his warm-up lap. Yeah, he's been so calm on that warm-up lap, trying to save those tyres. And uh, he went for it to get a good entry onto the hot lap and just pushed it too hard. Oh. Now he's spun off. He's, uh, Michael gone way off track. And uh, he is going to absolutely start way down the field at the back. And uh, Michael, too calm then on the outlap. For once, the immaculate world champion looks like a novice, and Michael Schumacher starts down the back in the first Chinese Grand Prix. The stage is set for a Shumi surge at the magnificent Shanghai International Circuit. Hello there, good morning to you all. First of all, very well done indeed for joining us. Live is always the best way, and you're going to see a piece of racing history as well as Formula One touches down in China. We're seven hours ahead of you here, by the way. There's a real buzz around this place. They're talking in terms of 150,000 crowd. Shanghai, well, it's a vibrant city. It never closes, and it opens its doors now to the fastest men on earth. the Pearl of the Orient, the Paris of the East, has a long and illustrious heritage. Originally a small fishing village, it officially became a city in 1292 and rapidly developed a reputation as the glamour and cultural centre of China. Now home to more than 20 million by population, this is the largest city in the largest country in the world. Old Shanghai's maritime soul determined the strategic position of this area, the Bund, on the shores of the Huangpu River, where the great trading ship sailed in from the Yangtze. Around the turn of the century, with the arrival of foreign money and influence, the banks and financial institutions congregated here, as can be seen from the architecture of these imposing buildings. Modern-day Shanghai is positively booming. This city is the world's largest construction site. Just 15 years ago, the area behind me, Pudong, was nothing more than farmland. Today, the only thing sprouting out of the ground over there is skyscrapers. And Pudong has become Shanghai and China's economic powerhouse. Work on the track itself began back in 2002. They had the government support, the money, and 5,000 people working day and night. What they built here is being described as the finest Formula One facility anywhere in the world. It's about 20 miles from downtown Shanghai, and given a blank piece of paper, the designers have let their imagination run wild. Most impressive is the sheer scale of the place. The bar has been raised by F1's favorite architect, Herman Tilke. It's hard to find anyone who isn't impressed by the place, but what will the racing be like? Well, the facilities are great, but the facilities don't make a, a great Grand Prix, do they? So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting circuit, no question. If it flows reasonably well, it's a great circuit to drive. I think it's going to be a good circuit for, for overtaking, a great race circuit. It's awesome. It's unbelievable. I think they've done an awesome job and, you know, they took it to the, to the extreme and it's really nice to see that. Super, I mean, <clears throat> I, I always had a lot of confidence that they do what they say they're going to do and they've proved they've gone beyond what they said they were going to do. They've done this fantastic job. Bernie Eccleston's seal of approval should guarantee Shanghai's place on the F1 calendar for years to come. 
But the twisty layout and dusty condition of the track have caught many drivers out. Watch for even more spins like this during the race. Opinion is split on whether it's technically challenging or just a pain to drive on. The track is evolving as the rubber goes down, so um, you know I struggled a little bit in the first session because we'd been chasing understeer all weekend, made some adjustments before that first run, and then had a lot of oversteer, so I ran wide in a couple of corners. It's very difficult here to, to have the tyres for the whole lap, so you have to you know sort of take it slightly easy at the start of that, or, or you or you overheat the tyres. Those variables should help produce a good race today. Despite being expensive for the average Chinese punter, the event is a 150,000 sellout. The main grandstand seats 30,000 people. And if you're wondering what the colors are all about, in China, red symbolizes luck, orange, fortune, and gold means power. Shanghai is an emerging world-class city and needed a world-class sporting event. They've even managed to put one over their great rival, Beijing, who will have to wait till 2008 when they host the Olympic Games. There's plenty of space in the pit lane, while in the adventurous paddock, teams inhabit fully equipped huts on stilts imitating ancient Chinese gardens. Many hope F1's impressive new venue won't mean the end of more traditional European circuits, such as Imola and Silverstone. A warm 29 degrees down here in the paddock. This place is just fantastic, Tony, the best in the world by a distance. It's a huge feat of engineering. They had to sink these huge pylons down about 80 metres to build it. You've got these Space Age uh, buildings behind us. Luke Skywalker's going to land any minute. <laughs> I mean, it's like being on a set from a Sky-Fi movie. It's amazing. That's right. 14 months ago, we'd have sunk through here. We've been standing on a swamp, and uh, Michael Schumacher got in a bit of a swamp. He's been in a bit of a sticky mood all weekend, isn't he? Michael, what's going on with him? Well, I think, you know, he's won everything. It's been an incredibly long season for the 35-year-old, 12 wins this year. He had a software problem here early on on Friday. And he was quite irritable, walking back to the pits. Get out of the way, he said to the camera, and he covered up the lens. And then, amazingly, we had this spin in qualifying. He'd come through the last corner on that lap on the warm-up too fast. He'd got a wobble, he'd got his tyres dirty. He was at 150 miles an hour. He was nearly 20 miles an hour too fast. Don't misjudge him because he's still motivated, but his judgment there was wrong. Starting last, he says that he's not sure if it's his fault. What's your view on what happened there? No, I think it was his fault, and, and I think, you know, they've, they've gone through the car with a fine-tooth comb, and obviously they've even changed the engine at the end to try and find out what was wrong, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it was just purely Michael's judgment. He's very tired at the end of a long season, and he's just slightly off the boil. He hasn't won since Hungary. One fellow has been really genial, all smiles all weekend. You have to look twice to make sure it's the same <laughs> guy. It's Jacques Villeneuve, the 1997 <laughs> world champion, back driving for Renault. Well, you know, when he was at BAR, that team was built around him and he called the shots he was i would say very very rude uncommunicative individual he used to walk into the garage in the morning with his helmet on and get into the car not talk to the mechanics here he's you know fellow well met and shaking hands with everybody because he's hungry after that year off in solitary confinement having to learn a little bit about the renault jensen button now uh, it's going to be a ruling next month whether he can move from bar to williams bar by the way are very confident he's going to stay but jensen in the middle of all that political mayhem is doing the business very very professional smooth fast very proselyte, delivering great performances. But we mustn't underestimate his relationship with Frank Williams. We mustn't well, underestimate... Well, the David Richards one doesn't look no, too bad. No, but that's good. I mean, it's, it's warmed up again. But, but Jensen did have a meeting with the press 10 days ago to reaffirm that he wants to go to Williams. So we'll just have to wait and see until the contract recognition board get together again in Milan in about 10 days' time. At uh, Williams, uh, Ralph Schumacher returns after his horrible crash at Indianapolis. Um, are the team happy to have him back, do you think, because he's on the move? I don't think they are. They wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't be happy. You wouldn't be happy if you were Sir Frank Williams. Why do you want to give away all your latest developments, your latest aer aerodynamic developments, your latest developments with the BMW engine? This man is going to, 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 to Toyota. They're going to be a big, big power in Formula One. You're giving things away, but he's fit again, so they can't keep him out. Look about ultimate team members. Rubens Barrichello, winner at Monza, on pole there and on pole here again. He says, look, I'm not driving any differently as I did before the championship is won, and he hasn't. I think the difference is that Michael Schumacher is a little bit off the boil. You know, Michael Schumacher's been beaten by Kimi Räikkönen. He's been beaten by this man, Rubens Barrichello. And Rubens, with that win, he's really got his tail up after Monza, and he's, he's flying. What a grid you've got, Tony. Six different cars in the first six. Michael Schumacher down the back. Just talk us through it.
Well, of course, I mean, it's a challenging new track to tackle uh, with a different grid for the very first Chinese Grand Prix. Barrichello back-to-back -back poles, Italy, now Shanghai. Second, strong McLaren performance from Raikkonen. Remember, he was on pole in Silverstone. And Button, importantly, starting third ahead of the Renaults. Fourth, a career best for Massa in the Sauber. Then Ralph's return after injury, he nets a surprise. Fifth place, Alonso struggling in the Renault 6. Seventh, Fisichella. Eighth, Panis. Ninth, Coulthard. And tenth, disgruntled uh, Montoya, his unpredictable Williams BMW. Weber saved a big slide, eleventh. Twelfth, the wrong part of the grid, said Villeneuve on his return for Renault, replacing truly before he goes to Sauber. Zonta, thirteenth. Fourteenth, Heidfeld. Fifteenth, Clean. Sixteenth, Glock. Then 17th Bruni, who spun off. 18th Sato's BAR Honda, hopes to catch up after an engine change penalty. 19th Baumgartner, he had a fresh engine. Michael Schumacher achieves another career first, last after spinning and an engine change. So watch him go. It was a good lap. Uh, I liked the lap um, uh, from, from qualify. I knew it was going to be a, a good battle with, uh, with Michael because he was going to be close in front, behind, you never know, but it's, uh, I was in shock when I saw him spinning because it's, uh, it's not uh, usual that you see him uh, doing a mistake. I don't want to say it's uh, not a mistake of mine because maybe it turns out to be, but uh, I'm a I would be a little bit surprised. We will have a strong race because we have a good tactics and the, uh, the, the tires are working very, very well. So. I'm, I'm hopeful that we, we, we can be challenging for a win. Well done, Jensen. You've been promising all weekend. We've delivered in qualifying. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I think we're reasonably happy to be there. Uh, it's, I'm on the clean side for once. It's been a while since we've been on the clean side, so pretty chuffed, and um, hopefully we can have a good race from there. It's, it has been particularly difficult this weekend to get the best out of the car. And in sector one, I struggled anyway, so I'm really surprised that I got the lap together half decent. I mean, it could have been a lot quicker, but anyway, it's good to be back and to be back in reasonable shape, uh, although we have such difficult conditions. Do you think you're going to be going it alone for Ferrari in the race, or are we going to see Michael making his way up through the field as we did in Monza? I'm quite sure the, the Chinese TV will be searching for him and he's going to be coming up. I mean, if he's going to be able to win the race, uh, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I hope Probably he comes not. second. <laughs> but uh, in, in many ways, I think he, it, it is a risk track that you, you, you have the chance to overtake. So I think Michael is going to be up there at some point in the race. Yes, watch him go. But those Jaguars, Mark Webber and Christian Clean, starting 11th and 15th. Now, Jaguar are up for sale, their Formula One life, which began in that blaze of publicity in Melbourne four years ago. Well, it'll end after the last race in Brazil next month. This is Jaguar's toughest weekend. The car's a handful, and everyone in the team could soon be out of a job. The only hope is that Ford find a buyer before mid-November, when entries for next season have to be submitted. The race team photo on Thursday looked ordinary at first, but turned out more like a picture ad in the classifieds. F1 outfit available to the highest bidder. At one time, it was even on eBay. I think it's an error. I think it's a, a short-time problem that the company have. Uh, and to make a long-term decision based on a short-time issue, I think is showing some lack of judgment. It's upsetting because we've worked very hard. I believe we're, we, we do a lot for the funding that we get. We punch above our weight in Formula One. What I've got to do is make sure we compete the, the rest of the season well. So we've got the staff motivated. They understand that we've got to keep fighting. And um, because, because we've got to keep the value in the company for any potential buyer, uh, to make sure we've, uh, we've got a good um, race team firing on all cylinders. This says much about the state of finance in Formula One. In the same week as massive commercial opportunities open up here in China, one major car manufacturer quits because they can't afford to compete. More could soon follow, according to the sports governors. It could have been avoided. Uh, the, we, I've been trying for more than two years now to bring measures in to reduce the costs, but unfortunately we have this agreement with the teams that we can't change things without them, uh, all of them agreeing. And so when that agreement runs out at the end of 2007, then we can solve the problem. In the meantime, we might lose another manufacturer or two because it is unsustainable. Some of them are spending a quarter of a billion dollars, not a million, a billion dollars, on their engine program each year, and that's simply not affordable. There are possible purchasers interested, but Ford's F1 engine company, Cosworth, is also on the market, and that's likely to be sold off separately. 
It's bad news for Minardi and Jordan, who have to look elsewhere for engines. The last thing Formula One needs is for another team to disappear into the shadows. Well, the latest from Minardi this weekend, Paul, is that you've said you can't afford to produce a new car to the new regulations next year, and you've asked the team bosses to let you off, right? What we've actually said is that if we don't get a decision on the engine, then it would be incredibly hard to change what we've already designed for next year and adapt it to this year's engine. So if we have to run our own engine next year, which I hope Cosworth will find a buyer. I've got a lot of friends at Cosworth. I think they will. But in the event they didn't, what I've asked, is because we don't have at this late stage time to now redesign next year's car to take this year's engine, that I would like to run with this year's car and this year's engine for next year as a one-off just to simply be able to be competitive at the start of next year if there is no bias for Cosworth in time. And that's the only reason. And the team bosses seem willing to let you do that, and, and you will be on the grid in Melbourne next year? Well, we will be on the grid in Melbourne next year, there's no doubt about that. But, and I think um, we've had a, it's fair to say we've had a lot of support for it, because to be absolutely honest, um, it's not going to threaten anyone. If we run with this year's engine, it's about the same difference as to whether we run with the new chassis, so time will be the same. Thanks, Paul. Really feel for Paul Stoddart, he's a fighter, certainly sympathy for everybody at Jaguar. My own belief is we need those teams on the grid as part of the spectacle of Formula One. You know, some of the driving around the streets in Shanghai has to be seen to be believed. In fact, Rubens Barrichello went as far as saying that China is bound to produce an F1 driver if they can survive the mayhem of Shanghai. Let's go on a flying lap with Rubens now. Distinctive slow first corner, long straight, decent overtaking opportunity at the end of it as well. Here's Martin Brundle and our pole sitters Ferrari. On board with Rubens Barrichello in the Ferrari. Track conditions have changed. Several drivers struggling to find the balance and the grip down into turn one. About 140 miles an hour. Hug the white line on the inside like it's your favourite granny. Whoops, we've locked the front brake and gone a little bit wide, so the lap untidy already for Barrichello. Now he can just gently feed in the power, trying to minimise the traction control. The right kink of turn five ahead, but that's an absolute nothing in any racing car. Heavy braking then for six, just gets off the brake pedal in time to get the nose into the apex. So very untidy so far then for Rubens. A great turn seven. Surprisingly not full throttle. We've seen drivers spinning off there through practice. Eight then, easy enough, but you have to compromise that to be ready for nine, the small left-hander. Immediately a, a left kink, but that'll be full throttle and a short straight up to about 160 miles an hour before heavy braking into a tightening little left-hander. And a crucial part of the racetrack, a long, initially quite tight right-hander begins to ease on you. You've got your foot flat on the throttle, but the front wants to push on like a speedboat. Now you're into the back straight building up to 205 miles an hour full 15 seconds on full throttle nothing for the driver to do apart from wishing he was going even faster now he breaks at about 105 meters before the first gear hairpin a lot of understeer turning in there but at least the balance is beginning to improve as the lap unfolds the important final turn then arrive drive nail the throttle on the exit that was quite good and clean second consecutive pole for Rubens Barrichello not a great lap but Michael Schumacher spun off and let him off the hook Martin's been out on that track uh, himself watch out for that before the start of the Chinese Grand Prix talking of comebacks we had uh, false reports that Mika Hakkinen was going to return but one former world champion is very much here and very much back in business it is Jack Villeneuve a temporary replacement for Trulli in the Renault after qualifying 12 Villeneuve the 1997 world champion spoke to Louise Jack, it's about a year since you left VAR. Did you always believe that you'd be back someday? Yeah, I didn't expect it to be this year, uh, but I was working on, on next year, yeah, definitely. You might not have chosen to take time out from Formula 1, but on reflection, do you think it's been a good experience? Oh, it's been fantastic. Uh, I hadn't taken time off since I was 17, so it, uh, it was a nice thing to do, and um, I think it just allowed me to keep the experience I had, but to be uh, fresher, like I was in 96. You seem a bit more mellow as well since you come back. Uh, you know, a year half of uh, doing only what you enjoy doing uh, help, helps to do that. So you've got three races back at Renault now. I mean, obviously you've got loads of Formula 1 experience, but very little experience of this car does that throw up any particular problems yeah because uh, the engineers don't know how I drive how I work and same for me I don't know how the tires work or the car and uh, a lot of setup changes we've done today reacted differently than I expected 
Uh, so that takes time uh, to, to, get, to get used to, and this being the first race is where we're learning everything. So how does your qualifying performance match up as regards your expectations? Well, I, I want, uh, it's, 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 to, it's where I, wa I want it to be uh, in time, but uh, the uh, four tenth makes uh, seven positions, so that, that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, sometimes you're half a second and there's no car in between you, and sometimes there's eight cars, so it's th that, that's tough. But, uh, the, at least the, the Renault car always has a good start and uh, we've been better on old tyres as well so the race should be fun. Now looking forward to next year, you've signed a two year deal with Sauber. Just explain the background to that decision, I mean you're a man who's won a world championship, Sauber have yet to win a race. Hey, when, when, when I signed with BAR five years ago and, and during the five years everybody was just telling me all the time how much of an idiot I was for, for being there and for having stayed there and look where they are this year. But you've obviously, I mean, looking at what the team have done in the last few races, they've now got the wind tunnel. You obviously believe that they are a team that is going to move forward. Yeah, the, t the team will move forward. Uh, how much, I don't know. And with all the rule changes, uh, it could go both ways. Timo Glock is also making a racing comeback here in China. He's replacing Giorgio Pantano at Jordan for the remainder of the season. Glock stood in for the Italian at the Canadian Grand Prix, scoring a welcome two points on his Formula One debut. But this time round, he's finding the going a bit tougher. P16 to points could be too large a mountain to climb. We changed a little bit the car and the car was a lot better, but again, I lost half a tenth, I saw it on the display, half a, ten, half a second in uh, corner 10 again, because we had a bit uh, too much understeering, and that's a little bit bad, because the time, the first two sectors was really, really good, and uh, it's a shame that I lost so much time in the last sector. But anyway, we will see it for the race, I think they are, we, we are there better prepared, yeah. Villeneuve joining the battle between BAR Honda and Renault to finish behind Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship. BAR just three points ahead after their best ever 11-point haul from Monza. A lot on Jensen Button's shoulders with teammate Takuma Sato demoted after that engine change and McLaren could still catch Williams as well. I have to tell you that uh, four members of the Williams team were involved in a car crash just outside the circuit here as they came here this morning, including Jim Wright, marketing director, and Peter Phillips. Remember, we spoke to Peter and the Spa Grand Prix. Delighted to say they are all fine, all emerged unscathed. But Peter saying they were very, very lucky indeed. OK, Takuma Sato demoted down the back. Michael Schumacher will be behind him as well. Let's have a word with Sato's race engineer. It's Jock Clear. You've looked at every driver take that corner. What did you make of Michael, the way Michael took it? Um, very strange place to spin. Uh, certainly nobody's looked like having that sort of incident all weekend. And, um, yeah, I would say it's um, a bit suspicious. Deliberate? Yeah, I think so. Why? Uh, I think the only challenge left for Ferrari, to be honest, is, is to win from the back. They showed the last race that they could make things difficult for themselves and still win. Um, I think possibly they're, they're just setting themselves new challenges. Um, perhaps there's other ways they would have done it, but you know, would they want to, people to bring into question their reliability or something had they not gone out in qualifying? I don't know. It just seems, uh, it seems very unlikely driver mistake, and Michael doesn't make mistakes very often at all, but to make a mistake like that is very, very unlikely. A deliberate spin, I have to say, I don't buy into that at all, Tony. What about you? Well, you know, he's a world-class sportsman. He's seven times world champion. And as I said earlier on, you don't question his motivation. You question his judgment there. He was too fast. I think his tyres weren't warm enough. I think he was desperate to get that speed on the straight, which is why he got the wobble in the last corner before. And it's very easy to go off that first turn. It's very, very dusty, very dirty. And it's the most difficult corner on this circuit. It's even caught out the world champion. That's my humble opinion. OK, I don't think we're disagreeing on that one. He had a spin on certainly not a deliberate one at the start in Monza didn't he that thrilling race a couple of weeks ago when of course uh, Ferrari recovered Rubens Barrichello recovered as well but here's a we'll catch Michael I think right at the top of the picture with that spin yeah well you're going into the second chicane there and Michael had started from third place he was on the harder tyres he got a bit more fuel on he knew what he was doing strategically Rubens Barrichello went off into the distance on the intermediate tyres but the track was drying out he had to come in but they switched strategy now Jim onto three so he was going for the short bursts, he was going out there, but in the meantime, when you go back out, you've got Alonso, and then you've got Michael Schumacher behind him, but Jensen Button 
already rejoining in the lead, just keeping the lead. A fantastic strategy from BAR. Michael Schumacher about to go in for his first stop, but Alonso behind him, Juan Pablo Montoya as well. Two fastest laps at this stage, set by Jensen Button. Absolutely superb performance. And then we had this third stop from Rubens Barrichello, but behind him, and having stayed out longer for his second stop, Michael Schumacher closes in and jumps Jensen Button to get that second position. Now we're getting back. Ferrari 1-2, who'd have thought it? From 15, Michael Schumacher fights his way back. Rubens Barrichello, he can't catch him. He's amazing. And it's another Ferrari 1-2. Rubens absolutely jubilant about that. A fantastic performance. There they are, side by side. Shades of 88 when Michele, Michele Alboreto was up there. But... Rubino saying, that's twice I've won this Italian Grand Prix yeah. and uh, also the only man to finish every race this season. I do want to know from you, Tony, can Michael Schumacher win from last place on the grid? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might say that. Of course he can. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. Well, when you rejoin us, we hope to be having a word uh, with Bernie Eccleston, the F1 ringmaster. And there's Martin Brundle as well. Uh, Martin behind the wheel and racing. A lot happened to him. Wow, well, you never really lose it, do you, Martin? Just about half an hour to go to the start of the first ever Chinese Grand Prix. You've had a bit to do with racing coming here, haven't you, sir? Well, little bits and pieces, you know. <laughs> You've tried for a very long time to get Formula One uh, to China. How yep. pleased are you that the great days well, finally arrived? We've been away now for 10, 12 years, and I was waiting to go to the right place, and Shanghai's the right place. Shanghai's Formula One. You're always uh, very fastidious about the state of circuits, Bernie. Um, you can't find too much to criticise about this one, can you? No, I mean, what's good for me, is heartened me, is obviously the BRDC have sent Jackie Stewart here to have a look and see how to do things, and he's going to go away, I know, with some good ideas. And uh, for Silverstone next year, that is, but surely it's, it's, it's important, isn't it, that we keep the traditional tracks, the Monza's, the Silverstone's, even the Monaco's, in conjunction with places like this. Yeah, I mean, we can't just walk away from these old airfield circuits, you know, people... It's what they expect, you know, people... You know, they like to walk around in the mud and things, you know, they're happy. I do know you don't like the place, Bernie, but you must recognise that uh, everybody watching ITV for a start, if you said, I'm sorry, there's no British Grand Prix, you would not be a popular chap. I'm not running for mayor. But you're, you, you feel you're going to say that? You're still in the back of your mind that it might come down and, and the Grand no, Prix No, 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 I mean, the, we've, the people have got an agreement ready for sign. They don't seem to want to pay a small part of the going rate, but we'll see what happens, you know. I wanted to, uh, there's lots of issues involved in Formula 1, we've got something here that we, we don't want to go through all of these, but this is some of the things that are happening, yeah. Jaguar for sale, Minardi and, jo and, uh, Minardi and Jordan, their doubts in future, you having a scrap with the teams, the rules they don't know, then the breakaway from the manufacturers, we're not sure about the calendar. I'd like to talk to you about the little teams, I mean, you're saying, well, if they go, they go, we don't really want them, and do you really feel that? No, I never said that, no, I didn't say that, what I said is maybe we can't afford to keep them. And if they can't afford to run their businesses, and if you're going to sit at a poker table and it's a big game, you've got to make sure you've got the chips to ante up. If not, you better get up and go. Deep down, how many teams do you feel will be on the grid in Melbourne next spring? Well, I don't count for teams. I mean, I don't think the public care about the teams. They care about the cars. I think they like. So we'll have 20 car competitive cars. But, I mean, three teams, uh, or seven teams with three cars each from a spectacle point of view, Bernie, It'll be that good. doesn't improve I agree it. with you. I'm no, sorry, you, you don't, don't really agree. feel that, do you? Sorry. As... Well, I don't know. I mean, will the public miss Minardi? I will. I like Paul. Will Eddie will miss Eddie. I think that you say, I believe they will. I think that is all, the, you know, the plucky little fellow, the Jordan, yeah. the, the no, Jacob. No, no, I no, believe I it is all that, part of the yeah. show. I think certainly with Eddie, we, you know, and Paul. I mean, Jacob, it's a big company. I don't think anyone will care, to be honest with you. It's just fine. It's ironical, isn't it? Here we are in the middle of all this opulence, this fantastic circuit, and we're talking about teams uh, going bust. Yep. But, I mean, they've been... Not bust, but they haven't been competitive because they haven't really spent what is necessary for a long time. They haven't spent what they should be spending for a big company. 
Let's talk about the race just finally. You're a good reader of the race. You always win our sweep, so we won't let you enter it this time. But um, Michael Schumacher, was that in any way a, uh, a contrived spin? Do you feel we've yeah, heard I that suggestion? I think he wanted to start at the back of the grid to show everybody could still win from the back. <laughs> You're having a laugh, aren't you? <laughs> so we need to see now, don't we? Hey, Michael will finish on the podium, might they? Really? You think so? Sure. Good. Well, Bernie, thanks for bringing us no, here. Oh, no. Enjoy the race. I hope all the public like it. And Happy that we're in Shanghai. Well, I, I, th I, think, I think those those watching are probably a little bit envious anyway. But you might want to watch the next item because it's Martin Brundle who's uh, taking part uh, in a race here around this uh, Shanghai circuit, a Volkswagen Polo celebrity race. Same as the Grand Prix, practice Friday, qualifying yesterday, the race this morning, and Louise has been following Martin's progress. He's doing all right, actually. This is Martin's car, fourth on the grid, amongst some fairly illustrious company. You've got Stefan Johansson out here, Jacques Lafitte, Mark Stura, quite a few of the Formula One old-timers. How's it going, Martin? You clearly haven't lost your touch. Did I hear old-timers mentioned? <laughs> you, you'd like that. You, did, you didn't think I could hear that, did you? <laughs> um, it's kind of OK. I, I, these sort of low-powered front-wheel drive racing cars need a very particular style and skill, uh, clearly neither of which I've actually got. But... I sort of dragged it up onto the second row of the grid and uh, Johnny Local over here, Feng Shui or whatever his name is, is apparently the triple Polo Cup Asia Pacific champion. So I might try and follow him. You've had people following you, haven't we? There was some footage of you uh, earlier on in the sessions with Jacques Lafitte stuck on your bumper. Yeah, well, for some reason, mine's not that quick in a straight line. It's probably a bit better in the corner. So I'm going to get mullered into that hairpin. But Jacques was following me, yeah, and just pushing me along. It's great because if you get in the slipstream, two cars go faster than one because they've got better drag or less drag. And uh, so uh, Jacques knows that. Well, we're having a lot of fun in practice. I hope we have the same amount of fun in the race. And chucking them around as well. I mean, you're flying off the curbs, aren't you? Yeah, well, they just pop up on the three wheels, inevitably. But I think they're great. Give it large. We'll see you on the podium later. <laughs> So here we go then, the eight lap Volkswagen Polo race for so-called celebrities is underway. Stefan Johansson from Pole on the right. Look at Martin Brundle in the silver car, right up behind Christian Danner, even Capelli in the red car there as well. And Martin Brundle up into second place. Johansson's been dropped down to third. A lot of contact there. Capelli pushed backwards. Christian Danner into the first corner then, the tight first right-hander. Martin Brundle up into second place. Johansson and everybody else following through. Lots of contact in the midfield, you can see there. Ivan Capelli coming out best. Xiao Feng has been dropped back into fifth place, the local VW Polo Cup champion. And Martin Brundle at the moment looking pretty clever. Having to move out though, Stefan Johansson's having a go around the outside. Jacques Lafitte in the red car behind. Is Johansson through? Yes, he is. He passes Martin Brundle for second place. Former Ferrari and McLaren driver Stefan Johansson is up into second. Lafitte is third, Capelli fourth. Where's Brundle? There he is in the middle of those two silver cars. And here's what happened. Jack Lafitte, former Ligier driver, gives Martin a little love tap. You won't find that on the streets of Kings Lynn. Brundle back in the race though. Look at this, Lafitte and Capelli, fourth and fifth in the two red cars. Brundle trying to go around the outside of David Kennedy, the Irish TV commentator, and he gives him a massive whack. That will certainly have damaged Brundle's car, certainly damaged Kennedy's, no doubt about that. Brundle crawling on now like a wounded Chinese tiger. Bits of bodywork hanging off the cars. And yeah, Martin's definitely in serious trouble. The race then won by Ivan Capelli, a smart move at the end to pinch it from Christian Danner with Jacques Lafitte in third place. Well, you were great going into the first corner, but it went a bit pear-shaped after that, didn't it? Yeah, a little happy Jacques got, went a bit hot into one of the corners and um, just wiped me out, put it sideways, and I lost a load of time. But it bent the suspension. But it's OK because he's sorry, so it doesn't really matter. There was a fair amount of argy-bargy going on out there. It's bound to be. I mean, they said they need eight of those intact for a, a championship round in Germany next weekend. So that was really the green light to trash 12 of them, I suppose, wasn't it? Are you a bit gutted? No, because it's, it's just a bit of fun and a chance to learn the track, which is what I most wanted to do. And so I can pretend I know a bit about it when I'm commentating later on. And, um, yeah, it's a pity because it looked like a really good race between some old mates, you know, but competitive old mates. So what actually happened? What was your final punt out? Uh, well, I was, I, I was already kind of out of the race because the thing was going sideways down the straight. Uh, and then I got taken out by, I got hit by some other people as well. But I, I was kind of ailing a little bit at the time. Stick to the day job from now on. Absolutely.
the old wounded tiger there. Bit of, bit of bumping cars and Martin coming out on the wrong end of it by the look of it. A bit of fun. I mean, I've done the fun, <laughs> mate, championships and you get bumped and bored from everywhere. But when it's X Grand Prix drivers, they took that very seriously. And indeed, they were playing around with tyre pressures and their suspension. Good fun at the end of it, but very serious while they were out there, let me tell you. And on a more serious note, Tony, what did you make of what uh, Bernie Eccleston had to say to us about the smaller teams in particular? I think what Bernie does as the ringmaster is he winds up various factions till he gets what he wants. And, of course, in this p position, he's saying to the manufacturers, if you're not going to give the privateers engines, then you're going to have to run a third car. Max has already told us that that's not viable. But that's what Bernie does. That's what he's the expert at doing. And there you have Ron Dennis and uh, alongside him, Eddie Jordan on the grid. And Eddie, Eddie's in trouble. You know, he hasn't got a lot of money. He's wondering what he's going to do for next year. The team is potentially up for sale. Yeah, and we're all wondering whether Michael Schumacher started there uh, deliberately. I personally don't, don't buy into that at all. But uh, Sch Schumacher will be down the back. Raikkonen and Reiter up at the front of the grid. Of course, Kimi Raikkonen going really well in the McLaren. Well, around these parts, uh, the bicycle has ruled for ages, but uh, the, the motor car is uh, well, it's not making a comeback. It's taken over and in style as well. The motor industry is growing, and now they're wondering whether they can produce a Chinese Formula One driver. Here's a contender for you as well. His name, Chong Kong Fu, based in Oxford. McLaren have him under their wing. He's currently driving in Formula Renault. Well, Chung, I know you're not racing this weekend, but you did get a chance to drive a Formula One car recently, didn't you? Yes, I did. And uh, probably uh, two weeks ago, I did uh, driving a Formula, McLaren Formula One car in Bruno. How exciting was that? It was fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I, I cannot wait for, to drive uh, next time. I know that some of the other drivers were there that day. Did they give you some tips? Oh, yeah, they are, they are really delighted. They are really happy uh, to, be, uh, to be driving a Formula One car. Also, I'm, I have to thank to them. Uh, before setting your car, setting Formula One car, they gave me really good uh, other, uh, suggestion and uh, advice. Uh, thanks to all of them. Did you find there was a lot to learn? Oh, obviously, I didn't do many laps, and uh, the braking acceleration is really impressive. And uh, hopefully, in the next uh, in the next time, and I can try to push a little bit harder. Must have been very different to your Formula Renault that you normally drive. Yeah, currently I'm racing British Formula Championship. It's a very very tough championship. I'm working really hard to uh, to win the race, to achieve good result, and uh, hopefully in the next couple of years I can step to Formula One. Now, obviously, this is the first time that Formula One has been to your home country. How do you think the people here are receiving it? Do they think they like it? Uh, they are, look, uh, so lovely, the fans, and uh, they are waiting for the uh, Formula One coming so long time already, and uh, I'm sure they're going to have absolutely uh, good time in here. Has the fact that the Grand Prix is here for the first time made motorsport in general more popular in China? Uh, I'm sure after the, these races, motorsport is going to be dramatically increased in China. Now, tell us what you do when you're not racing, because I understand you're off to do some studying. Uh, at the moment, I'm uh, studying in University in Oxford and uh, uh, on the automotive engineering course. Uh, in my opinion, uh, if I want to be a professional, successful racing driver, I should get some knowledge of motorsports. Well, good luck with that and good luck with your racing career as well. Thank you. What a lovely character, Chung Kung Fu. Remember the name. Chinese are putting on a real show here. 20 minutes to go to the start of the inaugural Grand Prix. Wonderful day, best circuit in the world. And we'll all remember our first visit to Shanghai. That grandstand holds 30,000 people and it is packed. It's the longest grandstand I've ever seen. Stretches just about the whole way down that straight. want to hear from you we always appreciate your thoughts um, on paddock at itv-f1.com you can text f1 and your message to 86188 and i'm around for you and ask the team this week all the details much more on our website itv.com forward slash f1 we have a question daniel jeffers from east london asking why norbert haug mercedes motorsport director has described the chinese grand prix as the most important race in f1 history herr haug explains well I'm, I'm still convinced of the fact that this is a very very important probably the most important the most recognized race in the world it is the first Grand Prix in China I think worldwide it will be broadcasted it will be in the news I think even in countries that are not uh, necessarily pro uh, uh, 
televising all the, the events from Formula One. We'll probably put it in the news and I think this is a very, very positive step for Formula One. A remarkable one and that's why it is, it is important. That was the background of what I have said. We've had another email from Craig Dazil. He comes from Troon. Craig wants to know, how do the teams and drivers go about getting to know a new circuit like Shanghai? Well, here's Mark Webber to give you your answer, Craig. Well, Craig, uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of information gathered over the, the course of the months leading up to the Grand Prix like uh, Shanghai. Obviously, like you say, it's a totally new event. A lot of GPS uh, navigational instruments go into the software for the teams to work uh, their corner radiuses on and also the length of the straights to work out the gear ratios and wing levels and things like that. And then the drivers, the best thing for us is to get our teeth into the circuit actually and drive it for the real thing. So uh, you can never get a feeling for bumps and, and di different grip, grip levels that might be on the circuit. So uh, a lot of intelligence goes into it. Thanks, Mark. Yes, thank you, Mark. It's his bumpy, particularly down towards the end of that, uh, that straight leading to the endless first corner, Tony. A real buzz around the place at the Chinese Grand Prix. Ralph Schumacher, good to see him back. He, he says he appreciates the life of a Formula One driver now that he's uh, been missing for so long. What was it, um, 14 weeks or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been out since USA. He said he doesn't remember anything about the accident whatsoever. So don't ask me what happened. He said, I don't know. He's a very uh, lucky young man. That was Willy Weber on his right. And there's uh, Fernando Alonso. And um, he's been struggling with his Renault here, actually. And uh, we'll have to see how his new teammate Villeneuve gets on as well. And I understand Villeneuve's even got a new Renault chassis. We're all wondering how Michael Schumacher is going to go from last on the grid. He's got a very, very quick car just around him, Takuma Sato in the BAR. Let's have a word with Taku. Well, Takuma, we've seen you pull off some fantastic overtaking manoeuvres in the past, and you're going to have a great opportunity to share some more this afternoon, aren't you, where you're starting from? I think, uh, yeah, this circuit um, looks like we can have a lot of opportunity to overtake, which we needed this afternoon. And uh, we see very interesting to, um, um, in, in behind is uh, Michael Schumacher in there. And I think it's very important to go through turn one and turn two because it's going to be very, very tight and uh, very important to avoid uh, any accident. Starting this far back, you did, of course, have the option to start from the pit lane and change a fuel load, which would enable you to change your strategy. Is that something that you considered? It was obviously one consideration, but we choose to uh, get off the line because it's obviously it's much, much efficient, if you like. And uh, we are confident with our strategy, so we'll see this afternoon. We will see they're all wondering about those tighter early corners. Jack Villeneuve uh, driving for Renault for the next few races, moving to Sauber for the rest of the season. Great to see the former world champion back. Let's go down to the grid. Martin got a very, very good start off there in the old celebrity race, Martin, and um, you could do a bit of walking now for us. Short but sweet, wasn't it? Welcome to this amazing grid. Just take a look around at this sort of natural theatre. It's not a natural theatre, is it? It's uh, uh, just but amazing nonetheless in terms of that's the press office up there the big sort of aileron looking thing you can see up there and the grandstand 30,000 people wonderful view down at the first corner it's just incredible Ferrari Rubens Barrichello on pole position uh, a sweet and sour qualifying for them I thought I'd get that in early so you can groan here at the Chinese Grand Prix because uh, Michael Schumacher is starting from the pit lane Ross Braun there's a story going around that Michael, and I can't for the life of me think why, Michael intentionally spun off yesterday some brilliant three banana strategy from you. Uh, I wish I knew what it was. No, no, I mean, it was a, in the end, I think it was a genuine driver mistake. Uh, Michael's just done a lap, the car feels okay. We're going to start from the pit lane because we want to change his strategy, um, take advantage of the fact he's at the back of the grid, and we'll start from the pit lane, change the strategy a bit. And, so we, re we can recover. Yeah, if you're going to spin off intentionally, you're doing a hairpin, not in a 140 mile an hour corner doing it, and then put the car in park firm, mate. So these two guys behind you, Raikkonen and Button, they're looking quite handy. Are you confident you can beat them today? Well, as always, the tyres are behaving differently. And being a completely new track, it's hard to predict what's going to happen. And we get a bad period from sort of lap two to lap five, where we get a lot of graining on the front. And I think we'll be very vulnerable then. They might, they might get ahead of us then, but I think when the tyres settle down, we're actually quicker than they are. So it's going to be an interesting race. In one word, Michael's finishing position? I would hope for a podium at least. Thanks, Ross. Good luck. Right, let's see if we can find Jensen Button, who uh, 
is going to be not very far away because you're on the second row of the grid. You're right there, Andy. And uh, here he is uh, talking to his engineer, unsurprisingly. Jensen, um, what do you think is going to happen today? The Ferraris look massively fast at certain times, don't they, in race conditions, but maybe not at others. Well, they, I, I don't know if they're running a softer tyre here than normal, but um, their one-lap performance is very good. But their runs on new tyres, you know, from new tyres, have not been that great. So I think they're getting a bit of graining at the front, which is causing understeer, which, which is good for us. Now that front torque transfer thing you got, it's difficult to say actually, isn't it? What uh, is that helping you at all around here? Um, it'll be helping us a bit around here. It's it's not going to be one of its better circuits. Uh, I think places like Brazil will be. So you just basically you've got fundamentally a very fast car, then you must be pretty confident for this race. Yeah, I'm reasonably confident. You know, for the team, you know, I want to do the best job. We want to beat Renault in the championship. So that's 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 our aim. But I want to win as well. That's that's uh, my personal aim. Yeah, it's about doing it. Good luck. Thanks for talking to us. I think I want to have a chat over here if I can with Felipe Massa on fourth fourth place. Same uh, same tyres, of course, as Michael Schumacher and uh, Rubens Barrichello. Uh, so a lot of fundamental speed. Not often we get a chance to talk to this little guy. Uh, I don't know whether he's say yes or no, but we'll give it a try. Felipe, quick word for. Don't, I don't, uh, quick word for British Television. Fantastic starting position for you. And uh, what's he, what's going through your mind? You think you can really get the job done today? I hope so. So for sure, the, it's my best starting position. I hope I can do a good start to keep my position. And uh, the race is tough, but I think we have a good car. And uh, hope to be consistent until the end and finish with the points. My goal is the podium, but you know, uh, it's always a dream. So if I can finish on the podium, I will be really, really happy. So you're confident you've got a race pace to match this qualifying pace, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, our car is, is very strong here. Better than we expect, actually, but uh, we're looking for the race. I think it's, we can do a good pace there. Have you got more nerves because you're up the sharp end of the grid? Anyway, if I can, if I can start in this position every race, I will, I will enjoy really, really much and uh, just a little bit, but I'm uh, looking forward. Right, we're looking forward to seeing you. Good luck. Let's uh, see uh, Ralph Schumacher starting his first Grand Prix for a while. Jackie Chan, I think, is on this grid somewhere. I'd love to meet him because he is a legend. Um, but I haven't had that confirmed. Well, uh, Ralph's got his helmet on so uh, uh, just let's just see if we can get a quick word from Ralph Ralph just a quick one to the helmet first race for a long time is it gonna feel strange I don't think so I mean it has been good in the car before so I don't see the difference between race and testing and, and uh, driving qualifying so I think it will be all right you look really refreshed after your break so it's uh, you must be really looking forward to this one yeah what you expect after a three-month holiday, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like a three-month holiday. Good luck. Okay, let's uh, see if there's anybody else. We've got a we've got a, a shortish grid walk today. I've got a 500 meter half kilometer walk to the commentary box. So James is going to be uh, getting a, a bit nervous up there, I'd imagine. I think, given that most of the drivers are getting back in the car, I'm going to head off up to the commentary box. Back to you, Jim. Thank you, Martin. Uh, don't bother looking for Jackie Chan. There are about 150,000 other people here. It might take a little while, but um, interesting couple of points coming up from there. Michael Schumacher starting from the pit lane, Tony, but Ross Braun absolutely adamant, saying it was a genuine driving error. Yeah, and that's what we all suspect. I mean, we can't say otherwise. Of, of course, uh, Jock Clear is in, entitled to his opinion. That's what he believes. Um, I believe that in such a fast corner like that, it was easy to misjudge it, as I said. And technically, as you'll see in this race, it's the most difficult turn. One, two, and three. They call it the snails. You look at the shape of it from overhead. It tightens, tightens, tightens. It has a downhill section. There's Rubens Barrichello. He's, uh, you know, back-to-back -back pole position. Doesn't he look so happy, Jim, and settled there with the Ferrari team? He's with them till 06 as well. He signed for them rather than going to Williams, and Williams yeah. tried to get him to sign for the team. And uh, a lot of very, very happy fans delighted to see the arrival of Formula 1 in this country. We saw Ferrari there running away with the Constructors' title again, but you want to make a point about second place in that title. Well, I think we've got a fascinating battle here between BAR, Honda, and Renault. They're throwing everything at it. Renault have got a new lightweight chassis, new front wing, new rear wings, BAR, new aerodynamics, but in the last five races, 31 points to BAR and only 12 to Renault. Quick word uh, with McLaren's Ron Dennis, he's with Ted. 
Well, Ron, a lot of people are tipping Kimi for a win. You reckon he's got more fuel than Rubens? Uh, we think so. Uh, time will tell. Um, but uh, can't underestimate the opposition on this second and third row of the grid, uh, third and fourth row, I should say. But um, most important thing is that we have a reliable race and I hope a good race for everybody because clearly China's put in a huge effort to make this a fantastic circuit and uh, I think we, the crowd deserves a good race. Let's hope we give it to them. Thanks, Ron. Good luck. Olivier Panis, Formula One's elder statesman, done really well. He's put the Toyota in the top ten, qualifying eighth. Here we are then on the verge of China's Formula One debut. They have built an absolutely astonishing facility here. The crowd has turned out in force for race day. The weather is absolutely great. And what we want now is a magical Grand Prix worthy of the biggest international sporting event this massive country's ever staged. Jensen Button on the second row. Raikkonen, he could win up front alongside Monza winner and our pole sitter today, Rubens Barrichello. Villeneuve back racing, so is Ralph Schumacher. What about Michael? Starting from the pit lane. Surely, surely he can't win from there, or can he? The Chinese Grand Prix is next. <laughs>